Hi guys, in this video tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this pretty mug cozy. It has a beautiful lace effect and it's decorated with a mini heart. So let's get started. To start with our mug cozy, we will need to select our two preferred colors. Here I'm using a purple color for the main body of the mug cozy and then I will use the white um, to make the heart. So I've chosen Sheepies Katona to do that, um, but you can use any other similar weight yarn uh, if you wanna make a mug cozy with the same uh, dimensions, which I will leave in the description box below. And I am also using a smaller hook, a 2.5 uh, millimeter hook to do this. You will also need a tape measure, and that is to make sure that you are um, taking into account the, your mugs or your cups dimensions. My mug here, as you can possibly see, is tapered. So I have gone ahead and I've measured the uh, circumference of my mug in the middle, more or less, because we want the mug, mug cozy to be as tight as possible. And given that the yarn has some give, essentially you can take the middle measurement and will fit nicely both at the bottom and at the top. So I recommend you go ahead and measure um, the circumference here and then just aim for a number of chains that is slightly less than your circumference just to give it that nice tight fitting look. So I will leave you the size of this mug cozy, the dimensions for this mug and the mug cozy in the description box below, as I just said. For this size mug, I will make 54 chains and all you need to remember in terms of making your chains is that you need them to be um, a number that is a multiple of three. I will be doing 54 chains. So just make a slip knot in whichever way you want and just start making chains. So I'll pause the video, do 54 chains and I'll be right back. I have now made my 54 chains and making sure that this um, piece is not twisted in any way, I will simply slip stitch to the first chain. Like this. And I will try and pick up both top loops of that chain. So now you have the base of your mug cozy and you'll go ahead and you'll chain one and then you'll make a single crochet in that same stitch, that first um, chain rather, that you slip stitched into. So take your hook, put it through the top loops of that chain and try and pick up the tail as well of yarn that you have there so that you don't need to um, sew, it, sew it in, in at the end, though you're welcome to do that if you prefer. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, two loops. And if you are just learning about the single crochet, I will leave in the description box below a link um, to my step-by-step -step tutorial. But all you will do now is you will simply make a single crochet in each of your chains. And you should have at the end uh, of this round the same number of single crochets as you chained. Just to make my life a bit easier, I will go ahead and put a stitch marker in that first stitch just so that I um, can easily see it afterwards. And I'll continue um, replacing that stitch marker in the first stitch of each of my rounds just to make um, the making of this pattern just a bit more straightforward. So I will pause the video um, make a round of single crochets and meet you right before I complete this first round. I have just completed my 54th single crochet. Again, by the end of this, um, this first round, you should have as many single crochets as uh, the number of chains that you um, chained at the very beginning. And what I will now do is simply slip stitch into that first stitch, like so. And from now on, our pattern starts. So just for the purposes of this first, um, or rather second round, but the first um, round of our pattern, I will chain one. And in that same stitch, I will make a single crochet. And you should replace your stitch marker here, just so that you are confident you're putting it through the right stitch. 
Once you've placed your stitch marker there, you'll chain one and then you will do a double crochet and that double crochet will go into that first stitch where you put your single crochet. So yarn over, put your hook through that stitch, yarn over again and pull through and it might be a bit tight, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. Okay, so this is what it should look like. You should have a little cluster coming from that single crochet from your first round, which includes a single crochet, a chain one and a double crochet. And what you will now do is you will skip the next two stitches. So one, two, and you'll go into this stitch here and repeat the same um, sequence of stitches. So a single crochet, a chain one, and then again in the same stitch, a double crochet. I will also leave a link to my step-by-step -step, um, tutorial for the double crochet in case you want to go through um, it in more detail. So we will continue um, making our pattern. So we will skip another two stitches and then we'll repeat the same sequence of stitches there. So go ahead and repeat this all around um, your piece and I will meet you again uh, once I've reached the end of my uh, round here to show you how we finish it off and then how we start our next round. So I've done most of my second round. I have just completed this um, cluster here of stitches so I need to skip two, one, two. And here I'll place again my single crochet chain one and then my double crochet and if my calculations are right and I have not made any mistakes I should have one two stitches left until that first stitch and these two stitches will be skipped and then I will start directly my uh, round three for round three and that's now our pattern repeat from now onwards what you will do is you will work into that chain one space and I think it should be fairly visible but if you are having trouble identifying it it's essentially the space before this double crochet stitch which is slightly more elongated and um, just is, is more easy to spot on your piece so take a close look find that chain one space and work into that so for me this is here and I'll go ahead and make a single crochet like so, a chain one and a double crochet all in that chain one space. And just so that I don't forget um, which was the bit that I um, started for this round, I'll replace my stitch marker into that single crochet stitch that I've just made. And so now without skipping any stitches, you will simply go ahead and identify the next chain space, chain one space and do a single crochet, a chain one, and then a double crochet. If you'll pull your piece a bit, you should be able to see your stitches a bit more clearly and identify that chain one space. Um, it is simply between the two stitches that you've created so the moment that you spot the two stitches coming out of the single crochet stitch from the round below further below then you know that this is where you're meant to go and your hook should simply glide in so go ahead and place a single crochet a chain one and double crochet in all the chain one spaces do that and I will meet you once you've reached the end of that uh, round so that I can tell you a bit more about how we continue building up this pattern. I have now reached the end of my third round and you can see that the pattern is starting to build up and you can start seeing this very beautiful sort of lacy pattern um, starting to form. What you will do from now onwards is simply repeat that round three. You'll go ahead, identify your chain one space and work a single crochet, a chain one 
and a double crochet in that um, same space. As always, when I start a new round, I replace my stitch marker and place it in that first single crochet that I make. And that just helps me keep track of which round I'm on. And for my cup, I made another 11 rounds repeating round three. How many rounds you choose to do definitely depends on the size of your cup and also if you prefer to have a, a larger or a smaller mug cozy. So go ahead and experiment. Again, the details in terms of the size of my mug cozy and the cup that I used it for will be in my blog post. So you can go ahead and check those out if you would like um, to have an idea of how this works out in practice. But I will go ahead and um, make another 11 rounds of this um, pattern, just repeating um, this round three that we've just completed. And I will meet you um, after I've done that to finish off our mug cozy. And now, and now for my last round for my mug cozy, I'll remove this stitch marker and I will simply put a single crochet in that first single crochet. I will replace the stitch marker just so that I remember where I started my round. And I will continue around my piece by placing a single crochet in each um, single crochet in each chain one and each double crochet like this. So continue around your piece by placing a single crochet and at the end of the round you should have the same number of single crochets that you started with. So here I've reached the end of my last round so I'll remove my stitch marker and simply slip stitch into that first single crochet. I'll take my scissors and snip off my yarn. So scissors, snip off my yarn, chain one, oops, chain one, and then with a darning needle, you can go ahead and sew this um, to the back of your piece. And as you can see, um, it will pretty much be seamless. Now, what I like to do is I like to place my heart in the other side of where my seam is just to make it even less visible. To make our heart pick up the yarn you're going to be working with and first we will need to make a magic ring. So take your yarn tail, put it around your fingers and on the uh, underneath your two fingers you should create an X and then capture the yarn tail with your ring finger. Put your hook underneath the first loop but then catch the second loop with your hook and pull it out and then go back under that same loop to pick it up and use that to go under your first one. So that's more or less how you do a magic ring and then chain three. And then what you will do is you will work four double crochets into the magic ring. So one, two, three, and four. You can go ahead and tighten the ring a bit more. It might make it easier for you to work in. And then we will make two trebles. So to make a treble, you yarn over twice, you go through your ring, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, take the fluff away and pull through two. Um, I will leave a another video tutorial for the treble crochet in case you are having trouble following it, but I will now simply go ahead and place a second one in the magic ring. And what I'm trying to do is to 
make all of these stitches, but especially the treble one, a bit tight because I don't want a lot of gaps uh, in my little heart applique. So now you'll go ahead and place and chain three and you will slip stitch into the magic ring. Again, try and keep this um, as tight as possible. And now I will chain three. And now we'll repeat the same sequence of stitches, but uh, in the opposite, in reverse. So two trebles. Again, trying to keep it as tight and even as possible. And now make four double crochets. One, two, three, four. Tighten your ring completely. And now to finish our little heart shape, just find that third chain and slip stitch into it, like so. Cut your yarn, chain one, and sew in your ends. If you want a bigger heart, I will leave another tutorial in the description below, um, which includes a second round in case you want your heart to be bigger. Now, to stitch it to the, to sew it to your um, mug cozy, you can either hot glue it after you've sewn in these ends, or what I prefer is to sew in the ends and then pick up a thread, um, a needle that is the same color as my little heart, and then sew it in place. This means that the stitches um, and the thread itself are much thinner um, than the yarn, obviously, that you've crocheted this with and therefore are much less visible. And what I like to do is simply go through um, those stitches at the very edge um, to give this, um, to sew it in a sort of consistent way. So find your preferred spot for your little heart, sew it together, and then you're done. And once you've sewn your heart to the main sleeve, you should have something that looks like this. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you give this pattern a go. Uh, detailed written instructions will be on the blog post linked in the description box below. And as always, happy crochet! Mm -hmm.